Kyle was very friendly, very kind, um, very outgoing. Everybody loved him. Kyle Yorlitz had big dreams. He was a natural, you know, at this performance was going to be a thing for him. But those dreams were shattered by a bullet from a stolen gun. A Metro Police chaplain called Kyle's parents up in Pennsylvania with the news. She said, are you by yourself? And I knew then it was bad. And I begged her to tell me that she wouldn't. She said, go find someone. It was dark out and she had a flashlight. I seen she was like staggering around or whatever, coming across the yard. And I, I remember thinking to myself, if she doesn't watch what she's doing, I'm gonna end up running into her, just pulling up the driveway. And then... I could barely walk or breathe. And he, he, th he knew there was something wrong. <laughs> he thought he was gonna hit me. Of course, your initial reaction is, you know, uh, are you sure it was him? Did you check his wallet to make sure the ID was right? And you know, that's stuff I was asking. And... It was, you know, we couldn't believe it. Police charged five teens ages 12 to 16 with the murder. It's a nine millimeter handgun. They also seized two nine millimeter handguns. One of them our investigation discovered stolen from a car outside these upscale Brentwood area apartments. The car's owner told police he left it unlocked. The other gun stolen with a car outside this North Nashville market. The driver left the engine running while she ran inside. And how does a person live with themselves? Like the lady that left her car running with the gun. How does she live with herself knowing what, what happened with that gun? I couldn't. It's a Smith & Wesson 40. It's stolen out of Georgia. Here in Nashville, the number of guns stolen from cars has skyrocketed from 152 a year in 2012, hitting almost 750 just last year. Take a look at this map showing where guns were stolen over the past five years from cars in virtually every neighborhood. And police data shows Kyle Yorlis wasn't the only victim last year of a stolen gun. And all I have is ashes. Antoinette Avant's 20-year-old son, Aquan, was gunned down with a 40 caliber handgun stolen from just outside Pearl Cone High School during an auto burglary. 30-year-old DeRoy Jones also killed with a 40 caliber pistol stolen from an apparently unlocked car. 37-year-old Darrell Groves murdered with a Glock handgun left in a car's glove box. This is one of the most critical issues that we're facing in our state right now. because Beth Jocelyn Roth has the Safe Tennessee Project. She says gun stolen from cars is a big driver of youth violence across the state. What we see um, is as these these numbers of guns being stolen out of cars increases both in in Memphis and here in Nashville we see a correlating rise in homicides and especially youth homicides. Experts say the problems began here at the state capitol when Tennessee's pro-gun legislature made it legal back in 2014 for Tennesseans to keep loaded handguns in their cars. There's not necessarily a reason why they should be leaving them in their cars. But they can legally do that. Uh, legally they can, yes. Gun lobbyist John Harris with the Tennessee Firearms Association says he would prefer that gun owners use a locking device like this and the weapon lays there. To keep their handguns secure when they are not in their vehicles. But he doesn't want to punish those who don't. Should it be a crime for someone to leave a handgun unsecured in a vehicle? I don't think so. Uh, I realize that it can result in a criminal getting access to it and doing something wrong. Killing someone. Killing someone, but you could steal the purse with money in it and go on the street and buy a gun, so how do you differentiate? I don't know how you could think that. It defies logic. The Yorlitz say they believe there's a chance Kyle would still be alive if the gun owners had not made it so easy. You know, I'm all for being able to carry a gun, but there are responsibilities that go along with that. And if you're not willing to accept those responsibilities, not only for the safety of yourself and your family, but for the rest of the community, then you're not, you, don't have, right. you don't deserve to have the right to carry that gun. Right. If they didn't get it from a car, that same person may have gotten it from another source whether legal or illegal. Yeah, that's an argument that you only hear in relation to guns. You don't ever hear anyone say, underage kids are always gonna figure out a way to get alcohol. 
so we should just lower the drinking age. Or people are always going to drink and drive, so maybe we shouldn't have DUI laws. Yeah, there's a chance that they would get those, but you don't make it easier for them. When they're in their car, they can keep it in the seat next to them. Last session, lawmakers failed to approve legislation to impose a fine on people who leave handguns unsecured in their cars. Even though it's a fine only, if you, you know, I'm a lawyer, if I got a misdemeanor on my record, I'm gonna have to go talk to the Tennessee Supreme Court in the bar. Do you wanna make the victim a second victim. John Harris says in the Cal Yorlitz case, the gun owners were also victims from the theft of the weapons they left unsecured. What's the reluctance to at least say there ought to be a fine for leaving a handgun unsecured? I think it, it, it ultimately comes down to you're victimizing them a second time. And some people will hear you say that and say that's pretty callous. Well, it may be, but it's the world we live in. I mean, you know, Tennesseans love their guns. What would I do but the Yorlitz say Tennesseans should also love their children. What has been the hardest moment for you? Just not having him to talk to. Just that he's not here. It's, it's still unbelievable. After all this time, it's like it just happened. Those lobbyists, if this would have been their family instead of mine, their attitude would change very quickly. Their comprehension of what, what the other side of it is would be considerably different.